I have a good word today to share with you if you're dealing with anxiety and you just need some peace. If you start to feel anxious, start naming out every single little thing to God. Every little thing. During the day, the second that something happens, start giving it to God so you don't jump to conclusions and you're not igniting the fire of anxiety that you already have. Philippians 5-7, through 7, The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Remember what God has already done in your life and how far He's already taken you. Give Him praise for everything that He's already done and stay reading in your scripture. It is so, 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 so crucial. Think of it like this. is Your soul is your gas tank and your scripture is your gas. When it runs out, it's going to start going to the reserve tank and the reserve tank is being fueled by the devil. Your reserve tank can only last for so long. So keep fueling it with scripture. You fell into sin. Now you feel so sad. You feel so broken. Now you feel like God is mad at you. You don't know what to do. This is what the Bible says. Proverbs 24 verse 16. For a righteous man falls seven times and rises again. But the wicked stumble in time of calamity. Get up. As the moment you fall, that's the moment you get back up. If you let, if you stand on the floor, you're letting the devil tempt you. You're letting the devil just torment you with your thoughts. You see, as a soldier of Christ, you're supposed to have the armor of God. If you fall into sin, confess your sin, get up and do it and keep walking with Christ. Stop worrying about the future. Stop worrying about the past. Forget about the past. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ. So if you just fall into sin, get up and keep walking with God. Stop, stop staying on the ground. Stop staying on your bed and get up and keep fighting for Christ. Keep walking with Christ. Stop letting the devil take advantage of you, but have your armor on. Man, y'all, God just convicted me so hard. All right, y'all, so I was putting my key in the door to open it, and as much as I would wiggle it and move it around, it would just not budge, and the key was not going in, and I wasn't able to get in my car. And so I was trying all these solutions. I was, like, getting on the ground. I was, like, wiping off the key. I was spitting on the key to try to, like, get it loose enough to get it in there. I was, I was looking foolish, and I was going to walk to the gas station to get some WD-40, and I realized it was a 10-minute walk, and I was not trying to do that, and I realized I haven't prayed yet. And I was like, God, please, in the name of Jesus, open this door. And I put the key in and it worked. And in that moment, God convicted me and he said, you do this all the time. You try to find solutions in your own strength and lean on your own understanding. And what should be your first response is always your last response. So if you find yourself dealing with anything, don't you dare think that your problem is too small or too big for God. I feel like most people have felt this way before. For me, what really helped is just talking to God. Think about it like this. If you had a friend that really ever reached out to you and asked how you were doing, or if you would send them a message, they would leave you on red. But as soon as they needed something from you, they were quick to ask. That's not much of a friendship. So if you wouldn't want your friend to treat you like that, why would you treat God like that? Prayer isn't something magical. It's literally just having conversations with God. Like every single time I wake up in the morning, I say a prayer and I'm like, thank you, God, for waking me up this morning. Thank you for letting me see another day. And then I just talk to God throughout my day. I'm like, Lord, help me get through this math exam that I didn't study for. Um, also, this goes with anything in life. You want to surround yourself with people who are where you want to be. So if you want to be closer to God, get around people who are hungry after God. Having Bible study with friends. Like sometimes the Bible can be hard and boring, but reading it with a group of people, with friends, can actually be very fun. It's just the little things that help strengthen your relationship and get you more comfortable with talking to God. It's millions of us just like you, like you, like you, just like you, like you. Power 88.3, my name is Brett, and how do you know if something is from God? How do you discern if it's a call from God or if it's something that you just want selfishly? Well, I think the Bible talks quite a bit about how he speaks to us. He speaks through prayer, worship, through our friends. He can confirm his call on our lives through our friends, through music, speakers, so many different things. But if we get distracted, it's sometimes easy to like lack the patience that is needed to realize that God is still on his throne and he still has a plan for our lives. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, and plans to give you a hope and a future. God is still on his throne. He's still reigning supreme, and he's got a hope and a future for your life. Psalm chapter 4 verse 8. 
In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. So this verse is why Psalm chapter 4 is referred to as an evening prayer. You can imagine David getting ready to sleep with his men around him. He's probably in the wilderness, maybe even a cave somewhere, hiding out from his enemies because they're trying to kill him. They're trying to seek him out to slander and destroy him. And even in the midst of all this, David is sitting here saying, in peace, I'll lie down and sleep. But notice it's not because of his men who will protect him. It's not because he, he's a better fighter than all the other enemies trying to, trying to kill him. No, it's because he says, you alone, O Lord. So he's putting his trust in God. And that's what you need to do right now. If you have trouble sleeping at night because of what you're going through, take your anxieties, give it to Jesus and trust him to take care of you. The reason why a lot of y'all keep falling to the same sin over and over again is one, you don't have the fear of the Lord. Two, you need deliverance. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. The fear of the Lord is to depart from evil. The fear of the Lord is to turn to God no matter what the situation you're going through. That is the fear of the Lord. You have to read the Bible to understand what the fear of the Lord is. That's why a lot of people over here keep talking about the love of God and this and that, but now they're not preaching about how much God hates sin. How much sin is an abomination to God. What are y'all doing? The first and greatest commandment is to love God with all your mind, soul, and heart. When you love God with all your mind, you wouldn't even want to sin against Him. Every single thought that comes to your mind that try to go against what God is telling you to do, cast it down immediately. 2 Corinthians 10 5 it says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt them, itself bringing into captivity every thought that to the obedience of Christ. Are you bringing your thoughts to the obedience of Christ? Okay, so this is going to be for Christians, and I know it's late, but I was thinking about something and I felt led to share it, so I'm going to. Now, I was laying here in bed and I was thinking about the scripture where Jesus says, Many will go down the broad path that leads to destruction, but few will go down the narrow path that leads to eternal life. And the more I observe that scripture, the more I understand it. You see, that scripture is not just for unbelievers. That scripture is for believers as well. Because I see so many people of the Christian faith today who have such a hard time letting that one fleshly desire go. And they try to take that fleshly desire and justify it by saying that God doesn't care about it. And I just want to remind you, if you're a Christian and you're watching this, I want to remind you that no matter how small or irrelevant you may think something is, if God speaks on it, it matters. Because God's word is even above his name. So, <laughs> you know, look at this, look at this. This is Moses and a uh, guy, right? So the Israelites, Moses told the Israelites, to, uh, he said, get going, you and the people you brought up from the land of Egypt. Go up to the land I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I told them I would give this land to your descendants. Then he said, but I will not travel among you, for you are a stubborn and rebellious people. <laughs> he said, if I did, I will surely destroy you along the way. They said when the people heard these stern words, they went into mourning. Y'all, they started crying. God said, stop wearing your fine clothes and take off all your jewelry. He said, take them off while I decide what to do with you. God said, give me your iPads, give me your TVs, give it all, give it to me. Turn off the Wi-Fi. I don't know what to do with y'all. I don't even want to look at you. If I look at you, I'm going to take you out. So go on ahead. Go ahead with Moses. Moses had to go up in the tent to plead with God so he would walk with them, y'all. Fred, get your money, man. Like those no, I'm on. hopeful. Yes, I am hopeful for today. Take this music and use it. Let it take you away and be hopeful, hopeful, and he'll make a way. Jesus took every one of our stains. And he said, this is the thing that I can do. I can take the very thing that hurt you when you were a kid. I can take the very thing that happened to you illegitimately. I can take the same thing that the devil tried to use to take you out. And I can use it. This is why we celebrate the resurrection as a testimony of me making something new. Oh, you see the colors changing. This is called transformation. The reason why our church is called Transformation Church is because this is a sign of what God is about to do in your life. And he looks at all the dirt that you caused and he says, it's not enough that you just get clean, 
but I want to take and I want to pour it out on your family. I want to take and I want to pour it out in your co-workers. And I want, oh, I feel the presence of God. I want to clean everything that has been damaged. I'm telling you today with everything in me, if you, has been, if you have been stained, Jesus has come to clean your life up. You're not too far. You're not too broken. You're not too jacked up. You haven't done enough. You are the only one that Jesus went to the cross for. The Bible tells us that he would leave 99, 99 just for the one. And this is the truth of the resurrection. It wasn't for them. It was for you. At the cross, at the tomb, and when the tomb was rolled away, what Jesus did is he took all of my stains and he took and traded me. The brokenness that I would have. Oh, Pastor Mike, I still see a little bit on your shirt. That's my testimony. See, my garment is clean, but I never forget where I came from. See, the only way that I can be excited today is I remember.